The Grammys used to be a music awards show giving awards to popular bands and artists to recognize the music that we all loved while featuring performances to keep us entertained in between the awards being handed out. But today, the event endlessly browbeats the audience about how there are too many white people in the United States and starring in TV shows and movies and endlessly praises LGBTQ people for being amazing. And the show has, even perhaps not surprisingly, openly celebrated Satanism. In 2014, Katy Perry performed her song Dark Horse in a ceremony that depicted her as a witch and made headlines across the country from people saying the performance looked like a satanic ritual, which of course it was. She did it in collaboration with a group called Three Six Mafia. Get it? Three Sixes? The 666 Mafia? The Satanic Mafia? A few years earlier, in 2012, Nicki Minaj had done a similar satanic ritual for a performance of her song Roman Holiday. A Roman Holiday means to get pleasure from someone else's pain or misfortune. Nicki Minaj, the booty shaking bimbo, portrayed as a role model for preteen girls who Hollywood wants to follow in her footsteps. The Grammys, which is supposed to be a celebration of music, is now just largely an LGBTQ pride festival. In 2014, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis won a Grammy for Best New Artist and Best Rap Album as a reward for producing a gay rights anthem called Same Love, which promoted gay marriage. When they performed at the Grammys that year, 33 gay couples were married on stage as part of the show. At the time, gay marriage still wasn't legal in all 50 states and the issue was awaiting a ruling by the Supreme Court. Much of what's happening in the media and on the big tech social media platforms can be separated into two eras, BT and AT, before Trump and after Trump. After he won the 2016 election, the liberal propaganda became truly unbearable. To kick off the 2017 Grammys, Jennifer Lopez said it was a really tough time in our nation's history since it had just been a few weeks after Donald Trump was inaugurated as president and she sounded like she was about to break down and cry. It is about the music the words and the voices, how they move us and inspire us and touch all of our lives. At this particular point in history, our voices are needed more than ever. <laughs> Thank God the celebrities are here to save us. We need them, she said. There was no question what point in history she was talking about. Hollywood and the talking heads and the news media were still in shock that Hillary had lost. James Corden even performed a rap song at the start of the show, which included lyrics about his fear of what Donald Trump was going to do to the country. Rapper Busta Rhymes later trashed President Trump on stage, calling him President Agent Orange. He was joined by another group called A Tribe Called Quest, who made their entrance on stage by breaking through a wall constructed of foam blocks, symbolizing them tearing down the border wall. At one point, Busta said that President Trump was perpetuating evil throughout the United States. The following year, the Grammys were hosted by James Corden, who began the show by apologizing for being white. This year, we don't just have the most diverse group of nominees in Grammys history. We also have, for the second year in a row, the least diverse host in Grammys history. Oh no, a white male host. Shame on you, Grammys. Next time you better have a bilingual black lesbian paraplegic immigrant from Uganda. Then rapper Kendrick Lamar got on stage and performed an anti-cop pro-Black Lives Matter song. Halfway through his performance, the lights dimmed and the camera cut to Dave Chappelle, who made this idiotic remark. I just wanted to remind the audience that the only thing more frightening than watching a black man be honest in America is being an honest black man in America. Sorry for the interruption. Please continue. Well, that is true. Have you seen what the media does to black people who point out the fatherlessness problem in their community or who mention violent crime statistics? But that's not what Dave Chappelle was talking about because he's a liar and a fraud. He was implying that it's dangerous for black people to dare speak out against the police, which is all the Black Lives Matter movement does. I guess not all they do. I mean, they're a front for the planned Marxist revolution, but you get my point. Later, Hillary Clinton made an appearance via video that year, which showed her reading the anti-Trump Hillary fan fiction book, Fire and Fury, that was all the rage at the time. The following year, in 2019, they brought Michelle Obama on stage during the opening segment to talk about how much music means to her and how it keeps her going in tough times. They yearned for the Obama administration so bad they literally brought Michelle Obama on stage at a supposed music awards show to talk about how much she likes music. <laughs> 
Some clown named Childish Gambino won the award for Song of the Year and Album of the Year for his racist, anti-white, anti-police diatribe, This Is America, marking the first time that a rapper had won both awards. When the nominees were announced a month earlier or so, he and other rappers complained, as usual, that there weren't enough black artists being nominated, so the Recording Academy tried to make it up to him by crowning him the night's big winner. At the 2020 Grammys, host Alicia Keys started the show by playing a piano melody while doing a spoken word performance, mentioning the various artists who were nominated and tossed a line in there celebrating President Trump getting impeached. Broadway theater performer Billy Porter then took the stage dressed like a woman because you can't have a Hollywood award show without them promoting drag queens as a normal part of society. And he introduced the Jonas Brothers who performed a song but not without first acknowledging the gender fluid and gender non-conforming people for being amazing. <laughs> I'm serious. Ellen Degenerate introduced a performance by country rapper Lil Nas X and after mentioning some of his accolades, she praised him for being gay and a great role model model for millions of Americans. He's the one who openly worships Satan, so of course Ellen likes him. Michelle Obama was then given a Grammy for Best Spoken Word Album for the audiobook version of her memoir, Becoming. There was also a performance by a Spanish singer who goes by the name of Rosalia, who sung a few songs in Spanish to pander to the tens of millions of non-assimilating Mexicans who have crossed our border and are living in the United States. The American Music Awards show and the Billboard Music Awards are just more of the same. Taylor Swift even broke her political silence at the 2018 American Music Awards to encourage her fans to vote Democrat in the upcoming midterm elections. For her entire career, she stayed out of politics completely, but the pressure was building for her to denounce the Trump administration, so she eventually did. Liberalism ruins everything. As Donald Trump said, everything woke turns to bleep, and that's what these award shows have been for many years now. As a media analyst, it's been my job to watch and dissect the propaganda, but no man should be put through such misery, and at this point, Every year, the shows are like a broken record, complaining about white people and promoting gender bending and celebrating gay pride, so I don't think I can tolerate watching them anymore. I'm sure we'll see all the clips of the celebrity stupidity, but at this point, it's clear what the servants of Satan are doing. If something big happens at the Grammys, I may do a report on it, but I'm not sitting through the whole three-hour show. No human should be subjected to that in this woke era. And have you noticed how there's hardly ever any rock and roll or heavy metal bands that are allowed to perform? Only rap and pop. Do they even televise the winners for best rock and roll album or song anymore? That kind of music is too normal, I guess. They want your daughters to be shaking their butts and grunting to the latest Nicki Minaj song and instead of discovering some of the classics like the Eagles, White Snake, or Pink Floyd. Speaking of rock music, did you know that one of Guns N' Roses songs was censored? Recently censored, not when they released their albums in the 80s and 90s. In 2018, when the Guns N' Roses box set was released, the studio didn't include the song One in a Million, which is on their 1988 album GNR lies because it includes a little word that hurt gay people's feelings and Axel also made a negative comment about immigrants. Seriously, Guns N' Roses song One in a Million has been cancelled. It's probably only a matter of time before other songs like Aerosmith's Dude Looks Like a Lady will be banned for being transphobic as well. Once you give liberals an inch, they demand a mile and since they smell blood in the water, they will continue their quest to eliminate everything that they find offensive. If you enjoy watching my serious in-depth reports like this, then you'll love reading my books. So order my latest one Hollywood propaganda, how TV, movies, and music shape our culture, and paperback from Amazon.com, or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. In many ways, I think my books are better than my videos because I can really focus and formulate my thoughts and polish them up to perfection. So head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.